Welcome back to another episode of Multi Block Madness, episode six. So I ran into some quirky behavior with the Between Lands. These pieces, I have them, and I have the right item metadata and all that, I believe. It they never detected, but for some reason, this thing was determined to detect this token. And I don't fully know what happened, but I got these rewards and I've claimed this, but nothing shows up. And where else here? And while I was trying to troubleshoot that, I used the token thinking, has the token been used already? But no, I used it and I took, uh, I took these rewards and they're just a bunch of knowledge. I don't think I'm going to use the cheater Stominomicon like I may have mentioned. So here they are right here. And as far as I know, I guess I threw all my items. Yeah. So that's a sweet little device to get for Thomcraft. And if I pull up the book real quick, uh, where is it? Is there not a way you can see your current knowledge? Oh, that's neat. I don't think I knew there was a search feature. Oh, it's right here. Knowledge, knowledge totals. So right now I got a bunch of high 20s. Nothing down here. And if I just eat these, they're supposed to just give me knowledge. And just for fun, if I go back to here, it looks like it's pretty universal. So I might as well just eat it all. Yeah, they all seem to got some numbers. So that's cool. Yeah, 140 to 1400. It's like a times 10 type of thing. So what I'm thinking is for Thomcraft, these travel anchors that I got from Ender.io, I can stick them that guy's kind of spooky. Over here. And do I could practice a thumb craft inside of here. I guess this whole building is a, an even number. An iron plate and a quartz. An iron plate and a quartz. So gems bronze plates and a glass pane so i see the bronze plate situation's not great okay so extract it and then only insert it so the bronze must be in here now bronze cool That bronze looks just like copper. So I have to make a thermometer. Cool. And then I can make the gauntlet. No, I can't make the gauntlet first. I have to make that first. And I might as well make two of them, right? And then I need four pieces of leather. That's the one thing I forgot. Or the four things I forgot. What is the leather situation? Not great. Do I have any raw meat? Rotten flesh. What's it called? Well, let's hope that the mod pack did not change the classic recipe. Nice. Nice. Copper. Copper to bronze for only a flint? One? Nope. Does lava have to be below? Why did I think a torch would work? Stick water in there. So we got a bucket. So because this is all temporary, I stick that there.
It's not bubbling. Oh, there it goes. So one, two, one, two. Neat. What did that get me? Oh yeah, brass. So I can claim this. And I don't want to get that. But that means I can go back here and do that one. The goggles. So a brass. Oh man, even more of these things. Those are not cheap, are they? I kind of want them though. They're really, I think they're handy. One, two, nice. One, one, two, nice. So now if I do two, one, two, goggles, thermometer, shift click, make two of them. Awesome. Shift click. Goggles of revealing. So now, bubble slot, boom. I can see things. Wait, did I not complete this? That's weird. Well, I definitely completed that. Yeah, here we go. What is this? Your first source of brass until you get access to zinc. And then of course this, this uh, hint here is a good one. Flint is a great source. It's a one-to-one. -one. It doesn't leave any extra, um, whatever the energy is called laying around. So there's no, there's no chance of getting that bad, bad purple stuff. Wow. I feel like there's a re a way, to, an easy way to get Prey Cantatio in this pack. So it almost makes me want to pick Instrumentum. What is a way I can get this one? Yeah, look at that. You get five Prey Cantatio for one of these crystals and these things just grow. So of course, as, of course is a quest reward. I'm going to pick the Instrumentum one. I feel like that's like a, what do you call that? A check. What's the check called? Um, my mind, a sanity check. That's what it is. It's a sanity check right there. I've been looking for this for ages. I shift clicked the backpack into that slot. That's where it is. And it's empty. Man, it's, it is big. Definitely got to be careful about that shift clicking. I should have known that too. Okay, so into Batania. Wow. Mossy stone. That is interesting. Well, I think I'm going to have to take some time to get organized. Give this guy some warp speed. That is so cool. Growth 20%, 40%. Wow. That sprinkler really does a job on it. Take. The clipping did not take. Clip it again. Take. Clip it again take. I wonder how many times I can get it to say that. <gasps> it took. That was only two, three, four, five, six. Now we're cooking. Now we are cooking. This is so exciting. So now I, these are both fully growing. I need to mutate this. That's completely full, so I'm going to try just dropping everything in. Eight. That is mega cool. 
And I don't believe I have any risk right now because everything's a one-to-one -one ratio. Might as well speed this guy up now. Just gonna abuse the heck out of this bottle. If I make one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So I've got that now. I always figure it's just easier to use a whole flint and steel on this operation. Only you can prevent forest fires. I forget what I'm trying to build. Okay. I was pretty sure the sheet metal was in the middle, but then I was confused about what went on the corner. And the answer to that question is... Living Rock. So we got a one, two, three, four. Fun times. Ooh, a multi-block. This right here is why they don't call it single block madness. Because I'm making multi-blocks. That's kind of a cool color scheme. Sylvain mine. It's interesting playing Batania where you're not getting into the endo flames first. It's like they're actually encouraging you to Try something different. So is that what I'm supposed to do? Interesting. So he's full again. Well, this is really interesting. Could I not just make a block placing? Why do I? I know I built two of these foresters, and now I'm kind of regretting that. And they gave me an acacia sapling. Acacia sapling? However you pronounce it. As a reward. Don't mind if I do. Oh, it ate all those leaves. That's like literally barely any mana. I have to do some testing. The setup's working okay for me at the moment. That's going to be loud. So that's actually the Munchadu right now. It's eating the flowers, not the flowers. The Munchadu right now is eating the leaves. And once it stops, because these are going to be full right now, where's my wand? Yeah, so all of these flowers right now are full of mana, and that's full of mana. I don't want to click on it because then that potency lens falls off. So every time that guy sends a pulse of mana from these guys, they're slowly going to get depleted. They're kind of on a cool down. You see how the mana's dropping there? So the mana fires into this detector, and then it fills these pools. And if I update them, you'll see mana's coming in. Where's that zombie? Every time there's a mana pulse, the detector gets a redstone signal. I got the repeater pulling the redstone signal out. And then it passes through a sequencer, and then it uh, gets inverted. And there's actually a torch, a redstone torch above that block. I don't want to break it because I got water nearby. But uh, that redstone torch will turn this thing on if it's lit. And it's full of 36 saplings. And I've been kind of watching the ratios of saplings, uh, making sure the system is, uh, what do you call it, self-sustaining. But this item collector from Cyclic, I've got it set to grab anything in that uh, diameter. It's always on, and that's the size, and this is the filter, so it's only going to pick up that stuff. I got a servo one here, it's just set to take four at a time, and I asked it to do it randomly because um, sequential wasn't working. I don't want, a yeah, round robin wasn't working, nearest I don't want, ooh, furthest first. You know what? I didn't realize that was there. Because I want saplings to get pushed there before they go in here. And then, of course, I have a large upgrade with the four items that this thing drops to prevent block lag. Or to try to prevent uh, block lag. So void and storage upgrade in there. So I should have a good supply of all that stuff. The forester from Cyclic is not going to tear down these oak logs because 
every time there's a redstone signal, it's it's being left off. And so it's not the most efficient system, but what's happening is, is in order for these trees to get chopped down to allow the other trees to start growing, is first, this redstone signal has to stop coming in. So it has to be done moving mana. And then once it's done moving mana, this redstone signal is gonna stop pulsing. And what it's doing right now is if you can see in that tool tip up at the top middle there, it's getting to a step, about step 12, and then it's repeating. So I have it set to loop two, and it's cycle all the time and restart on a loop pulse. So it's starting here and it's off, and then right before it gets to this row where it's gonna be on, it gets reset because another redstone signal comes in. So it's basically looping right here. And when that uh, mana spreader stops sending mana, it's actually gonna do the whole way. And I've got a delay of four on here and it's using the full 64 grid. You can actually shrink it if you want. And so it spends more time on than off, but every time there's a redstone signal, it repeats. So it, it's always kind of in these first two rows. And once the mana is done moving, it will turn this off, which allows this redstone torch up there to turn on. And when it's on, this guy's gonna run and he's gonna chop down all these logs, empty, empty. So he should be done moving mana right away. Perfect. So this should start up on the last green pulse, just like clockwork. So now the forester is chopping down the dead logs, or not the dead logs, but the leafless logs. And my ember system I'm actually using to power the forester with the RF. I didn't realize that the magic embers mod works, but uh, apparently it does in this pack. Or maybe it's intentional. I'm probably going to AFK today for like four hours. Got a bit of a road trip. When I come back, I expect to see two full pools of mana. Okay, so we've stopped moving mana again. And the forester is running. And the forester's going to stop as soon as these bunch of do start eating those leaves. Yeah, so you can tell which one's running because the forester eats everything, but those just eat the leaves. It's been about four and a half hours later. Um, I had this set on nine, but I changed it to 13 strictly because there were some trees that weren't getting cut down in this andesite area. So hopefully increasing the setting to 13 by 13 will be good. My only concern was that it spent more time doing block checks, but right now it looks like these trees are growing very fast. Oh, I see. This is full. I just realized that. That means no man is getting sent, and these things are purely just cutting, cutting trees down. So clearly I need some kind of a comparator on here that shuts this down. So as long as it's mostly full, it's going to turn that off. This signal's coming in for that, and this thing's still doing its little sequence. So that's fine. And if I just, if this is my main one that I use, anytime it depletes, the farm should turn on again. It's not perfect, but a lot of the stuff I usually would use, I think is gated right now.